Um, thanks, Howard, for the great talk. Uh, we have the Q&A now open. Folks are welcome to um, put their questions on the pad on IRC. And we might also open up this room in a few minutes if you might prefer to join Big Blue Button directly and ask your questions to Howard that way. Um, yeah, so Howard, take it away. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to have a QA. and a um, Tried to condense it so fast because this was supposed to be a lightning talk, but hey, it's good to talk to everybody. Uh, so question on the uh, etherpad here is, do I fall back to VTerm only when needing termula emulation? And, and yeah, I kind of know when I'm going to need that based on the use case. Um, uh, like right now I'm doing a lot of building with Docker and Docker just makes a mess out of everything. And so I, I can sometimes will like start up a V term for that. Um, but I don't like actually typing a lot of stuff in there as much. So um, actually I wrote a little program to, um, uh, you know, the compile command. I just send the compile over into it that I could see the output and then I could just and it pops right back to where I'm at. So I don't know. I, I think you kind of need to use a little bit of both. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to kind of flip a window back and forth because there's some things about eShell that I actually do like a lot. Um, now my tramp suggestion, OK, I'll admit tramp is uh, it's kind of fickle. Uh, I think we all get sometimes better use cases out of it than others. Um, uh oh, my, my headphones are out of batteries here, so we might have to flip here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so the tramp, I don't know. I think we have to kind of play with it, see uh, how it goes. Um, let's see. Another question is, um, have we thought about adding the eShell manual? You know, after doing this talk and I'm realizing a lot of the, uh, half-baked or almost good stuff with the uh, e-shell that we could just kind of fix a little bit and some of the especially some of the docs yeah i'm kind of thinking uh uh that maybe maybe i should uh hook up with somebody and we could try to do a little bit of uh extensions there you know like fix up the manual a little bit more make it more of a tutorial i think would help um as well as fixing some of the little problems like that uh, trying to be able to cat a buffer into the shell, I think is pretty useful. Um, let's see, do I know if eShell can be used from eLisp? Uh, yeah, I use that quite a bit. I actually have functions that call an eShell uh, command. That way I get all of the, um, uh, the, you know, the benefits that you can get from an eShell, like with the predicates and all that kind of thing. Um, I can't remember who's been doing it, but lately I've been seeing a lot of the uh, do what I mean shell commands that um, they're, they're building up a bunch of uh, functions that do very specific things, what they need. And uh, it seems like there's a lot of um, like special commands they're adding into it to like get the file name and that sort of thing. And I was uh, thinking, hey, that's a great idea, but let's do it with eShell. So I've been doing something similar, but just calling out to eShell itself. Uh, let's see, next question. How does that interplay with my literate DevOps approach? Yeah, the two are different. You know, um, when I'm doing uh, my literate work, uh, you know, I'm in an org file and I'm just writing commands. Um, <sighs> But yeah, sometimes it's just a little bit, you know, I'm not planning on keeping it. I'm just kind of investigating things. And that's what REPLs are really good for. Um, and in that case, yeah, I'll pop over into eShell, write things. If I see something good, that's where I was talking about my little engineering notebook, sending it out to a capture and then and capturing it out um, or writing it into a buffer where I can do more things to it. I guess it's the flexibility I think we all kind of need because you don't know exactly where you're going until you're halfway there and it's like, oh, I don't want to start up a new app. That's why we're in e Emacs. Um, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, Alvaro, Ramirez. Um, Yeah, that's, that's the stuff I've been reading a lot about. Let's see, another question. Do I have a strategy for getting around eShell's lack of support for input redirection? You know, that... Uh, it is what it is. I don't have any ideas at the moment. Um, it's a it's a good idea. Whenever um, 
you know, we're so used to doing pipes and whenever you start doing a pipe at all, eShell just immediately throws it into the shell. And, but then pulling it back in is kind of difficult. And so that's why I just started writing them out to buffers and then pulling them back in. And I find that just a little bit more useful uh, situation for what I'm, what I'm doing. I don't know if other people will find it as useful as I do. Um, but yeah, I'm getting a little tired of trying to get just the right command of piping everything together. And um, two years ago when I was talking about my little piper idea, this is kind of what it's morphed into was just using eShell, running the commands, editing the stuff, and then pulling it back in to send it to some other app. Um, or not even pulling it back in, just using it at that point and then sending it off into emails. Um, Yes, you can call elist functions, uh, the commands. Uh, I thought I, I was hoping this could be kind of clarified a little bit, but if you have any function, any emacs list function that starts with eshell slash, that gets called first before any command. So you can override just about every shell command. In fact, many of them are. So there is an eshell slash ls. So if you type ls into the uh, your eshell, it's actually calling that function. Now, most of those functions will, if it runs into too many options that it doesn't know about or something like that, will call out to whatever uh, ls program you've got installed. But um, but that's how that's how it goes. So yes, buffers are superior pipes. Um, whoever's typing that, I think that's a, a, a great idea. I think that's the, kind of the concept that I'm realizing um, uh, this year. Hold on one second while I switch headphones here. I suppose you can still hear me, right? Yep, I can still hear you. Well, nobody's talking yet. I can still hear you. Okay, perfect, perfect. And I can hear you too. So that's that works well. Um, let's see. Any other questions in the RC? I'm not seeing them mostly in the etherpad here. Do I have a preferred method for getting argument completion for shell commands? Okay, that's a really good question. Um, there is a uh, a function in uh, that I found in eShell for getting options. And it's like, great, that's what I was expecting, you know, something like a get ops. So I start playing around with it and it, it's like almost there. Uh, the problem is it's not really as flexible as I would think. It either takes command line arguments or it doesn't. And it just kind of, uh, it's kind of made for very simple commands only. So, well, I ended up writing my own. So I wrote kind of a GitOps-like function, kind of behaves like it, where you can give it a list of um, single commands, a list of those long commands, some that take options and some that don't. Um, so you'll see that in my, um, uh, where, where I've got it here in the Etherpad up on the full code. I also posted it up on uh, Mastodon as well earlier. But I have a, a link to my uh, configuration file. It's all literate, so you can just scroll down, search for GitOps, and, and you'll see my function. I haven't fully tested out everything yet. Most of the code was actually written for this talk, I found. because And uh, so there will be bugs. But yeah, you, know, you might find it uh, interesting to grab some of the stuff and um, play around with it. If you find some bugs, please send them back to me. I'll discover them soon enough, but uh, yeah. Uh, so is it possible to get uh, LDOT base completion for elist calls in eShell? Ooh, good question. I don't know. Um, I have been uh, switching from company mode to Corfu, just try it all out. Uh, I'm getting some um, pretty good completions, but uh, the EL doc based would be that would be very lovely. A Plan 9 smart shell. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, oh, yes. I, I do remember uh, reading Mickey Peterson's um, article on uh, eShell and, uh, and his uh, Plan 9 idea. 
I was playing around with it for a little bit, but um, I don't know. It, 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 yeah, I have. I couldn't get it quite working the way I thought I would want it to, so I didn't follow through. But yeah, he's got some good ideas there. Any other questions? But yes, I, I should. Yeah, I should revisit uh, Mickey Peterson's ideas. Uh, say it again. Cool. Yeah, sorry. I guess I was just going to ask a question on the fly here. Um, sure. Yeah, which is so you mentioned this sort of get up function or get up like function that you um, implemented. Would you consider mm -hmm. maybe um, having that integrated in Emacs Core itself so that it's available to all other uh, eShell users? I I think that would be a great idea, and um, I'm kind of thinking I need to kind of. See what should go into eShell and what should maybe be like a side package, like eShell EXT kind of thing for getting some extra stuff. Because I don't know if everybody wants all of it. Um, so having a side package might be a really good idea. And then seeing, yeah. So yes, if you want to work on with me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sounds good. Why not? Sure, sure. All right. Um, any other questions or are we good? I think we still right. have about, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I think we're out of questions. Right. Yeah, but we still are not out of time yet. So <laughs> I think we have like 10 more minutes at least. <laughs> um, oh, I, I, I've got more time for Q&A than I thought I had for the actual talk. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's been interesting. Um, so we were kind of debating on um, switching to two tra uh, tracks, like we have done this year, or keeping or maintaining the same setup the, as the previous years, which was one track, but sort of all the talks were very like squeezed into together. Um, and it was a last minute decision, kind of, and we almost did end up going back to one track. Um, but you know, we're here. But I and I think that's the reason why some of the Q and As are sometimes longer than the talks themselves. <laughs> Is well. Okay, so personally, I love the two-track idea, and I love all the breaks. It's made it a lot easier, because last year, it's like, oh, I can't even get up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel you. It's, and I feel the same, too. Um, both, I mean, as someone who's been a little bit watching, but also as organizers, I mean, we couldn't catch a breath with, like, that one-track rapid fire of talks one after another. So this is much better, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's keep it, let's keep it going. Yeah, and next Alan. year maybe I can do fifteen minutes. Yes. Uh, now, so are yes, are, you're are you the maintainer of eShell now? No, I'm not. Oh, just okay. an interested bystander. Um, I, I think eShell is still just part of core. Uh, John Wigley wrote it originally, right? Um, but I I think it's just part of the core. So I don't think anyone is maintaining it per se. Okay. Um, it certainly is getting a little long in the tooth, and we probably need uh, to do some updatings on it. So maybe uh, maybe that's what we should do for version 30. Yeah, I've started to use it a little bit more just because of all the chatter on the uh, on the various blogs, right? There so, is a lot of chatter but, lately. But it, it burned me recently, I mean, for like half an hour because I was trying to SSH into a machine from eShell. And usually I use uh, just regular shell mode. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, for some reason, it just wasn't. It didn't connect up to my uh, to the, the SSH agent or whatever. So I sure. thought, you know, I was thinking that that you know, oh, everything's broken and stuff. I'm like running around trying to do stuff. I'm like, oh, it's just because I'm in e shell trying to do this. Yes, yes. <laughs> and if I know I'm going to be SSHing into a box, I don't. I just start up VTerm and go. Okay. Um, then I know it's going to be pretty good. Uh, I've had a lot of good success in that regard with VTerm. Um, however, the problem is it's it's hard to pull that kind of stuff back. Like, you know, uh, I'll find something interesting and it's like, oh, crap. Now I have to control C, control T, and then go up and, and collect it as opposed to, you know, shooting it out over to my, uh, into an org file, you know, with a redirection. Um, yeah, so I, that's why I've been kind of playing around with just using Tramp and eShell as opposed to SSHing in. Mileage may vary. I thought in the command interpreter, there's some stuff like... There is. It's supposed to be a uh, visual... Um, 
the visual commands. Uh, I think there's a list of them, and SSH is, is one of those. So it's supposed to then start off a, um, a, a, a shell mode um, detached little process and, and feed stuff, but uh, I don't know. I haven't I haven't had as much luck with it, so I haven't really bothered. I just jump. I just if I know I'm going to SSH, I'll just start a V term and go. Yeah. Well, I mean, aside from aside from uh, from doing SSH, just uh, you know, using. I think there are a couple commands for. There's one for taking your taking the command on the command line and and. Uh, Putting it into the kill ring, and there's another one for for flushing the buffer, flushing the last mm. output of your buffer, and it works in in many different uh, shell or REPL type environments inside Emacs, um, but it doesn't put it into the kill ring, which was sort of confusing to me. Um, mm. I know, I'll have mm. to dive into the ELISP at some point and figure out how to get what I want, but. <laughs> and I think that's the I think that's the problem with this eShell. There's a lot of like interesting ideas, but there's a lot that's you know not quite baked yet. So um, yeah, you're, it's a combination of what we expect, you know, because it's not a terminal emulator shell. You know, it's not like Bash. It's different. Yeah. Um, but it's got some cool stuff, but it's so there's expectation, and then there are just there are just bugs and things that haven't been finished. Um, you know, I can't remember who started. Um, I've got a link in it my um, in my configuration file, but somebody uh, was writing uh, on how to get the output from the last command in shell uh, shell mode, um, and I thought that's a great idea. I want that in e shell, and then I found <clears throat> excuse me found the source code that there's a do double dollar sign that's already there. Great. Wait a minute, it doesn't work all the time? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I saw that in your talk, I was like, oh, that's like that's one of the things I've been looking for. So. It, it is, exactly. Now, I'll, I'll admit there's some, just the underpinnings are really good. So it didn't take long to actually make that and uh, uh, fix it and then make it even better. Like putting in a kill ring, it's like, now that is nice so that I could just grab it as an array and go. That's really good. So I think there's a lot of good stuff there. I think, uh, yeah, let, let's just uh, make some uh, features. Let's make an extension and uh, and let's, uh, let's assign the uh, copyright to the the FSS. Yeah, maybe I'll start looking at eShell after. I'm I'm playing around with org Nodor right now, trying to catch up to some of the some of the forks. But uh, mm. but maybe eShell is another the next thing to sort of poke at. Aren't there so many fun things to do? Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, great, great, great. Oh, I got another question over here in the IRC. Do you ever fall back to terminals and shells outside of Emacs? Okay, that, uh, uh, all right, confession time. Yes, I sometimes use iTerm. Um, so when I, <laughs> so when I first boot up, um, I do have to use a terminal before I start up Emacs because it's got to mount everything. So I do use iTerm and, um, yeah, sometimes if it happens to be there, I'll type the command in there instead of uh, running into e Emacs. But I, I, I just find uh, running those terminals to be pretty frustrating because most of them, you have to use a mouse to copy and select stuff. Yeah, and actually I could maybe chime in here and say that, yeah, exactly. Not not only for terminals, but also for uh, IRC clients, I feel like um, I've tried using a bunch of different ones. Um, mm. Like, yeah, um, but it ultimately comes down to, I can't just put the cursor up, you know, quickly grab something, kill it and paste it somewhere else or just use it. And yeah, that's, that's I feel like one of the killer uh, features of Emacs or anything that's built into Emacs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I agreed. Um, Lounge679 says, what are the less well-oiled parts of eShell and the edge cases? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great phrasing. <laughs> less well-oiled parts. Um, there's just a little friction, and um, I think we need to figure out uh, how to fix those things when we encounter them. Um, 
Yeah, I should I should make a make a list of the things I found. And uh, hey, Mal, you give me a list too. And yeah, I think one of the problems with um, eShell is that it's not based on comment, like shell and mm -hmm. uh, it isn't. And other stuff. Yeah, and and as a result, the the other shells have like a uniform interface and uniform key bindings for doing things, and eShell yep. does things slightly differently, different enough. That, That's right. You know, yeah, it, it, exactly. And that's good and bad. It's doing something totally different. And if you know that it's just going to be different and you'll treat it differently, at least that's how I found. So that's why um, I'm jumping between the V term and E shell, depending on what I'm trying to do. But I'm just finding there's a lot of uh, interesting stuff in E shell, but it changes how we run things. I think it's um, very similar to, well, I mean, if. Okay, not blaming names, but if you're a, a, a VI user, you're starting with the terminal and you're running commands. And then when you need to edit a file, you edit, you come back, it, but the shell is kind of your main focus. Well, we're all over here in Emacs and we just run commands from Emacs, right? That's just how we behave. And using eShell is this way where don't go all the way, you know, don't try to, but you can kind of pretend and do different things. So, yeah, so, so that's why I say it, it kind of changes our behavior because it's doing things differently. So you can't look at it as another comment. Wait, so when you say you're you're using vterm, does that mean you're using that's a separate application outside of Emacs, or is there a like a oh oh uh, v yeah? So uh, vterm is. Um, I don't know when it came out a couple of years ago. I, I, I don't know the details of it, but it's using a, um, a module library to do all the heavy lifting. Um, so it's just a little better comment. And I've just found it to be a lot, uh, very reliable and pretty fast. So especially when I'm SSHing into another um, machine in my data centers and um, especially building all the Docker and some of the weird terminal stuff that I need to do in those uh, shell environments uh, using each, uh, SSH. I just find v vTerm to be really good for what that does. Oh, OK. I see it now. It's on Nalpha. All right. Yeah, yeah. It, it is okay. in the, it's, you're still in Emacs, and, yeah. um, but the, the key bindings are pretty good. But you do, you know, you, you, it has two modes, one for selecting text and then one for being a terminal. Maybe I'll try that out instead of MedX gel. Um. Yes, I, I would, if you can. The, the problem that I think most people have is building that uh, vTerm library. Um, I haven't had any problems on my work Mac, um, so it's been pretty good for me. Okay. All right, that's good to know about, too. But that'll keep me from you, like, adopting eShell. <laughs> okay. Sure. You know, <laughs> that's a nice thing about choices. Get Anything another works. distraction, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll just find that vTerm, uh, I think, uh, behaves exactly like you expect a terminal to act. And so you won't have, you won't have to do much. Uh, I don't have much in the way of customizations. It's mostly uh, my customizations is just starting a vTerm running SSH automatically. So it's mostly about working with my external hosts. And if I may quickly jump in here, um, I think uh, we have about um, another minute or so of live Q&A on the stream, um, at which point then the stream will move on. But you folks are welcome to um, stay here or like continue the, the Q&A on the pad or whatever works best, um, just staying in this room. Um, yeah, and continue talking. Lovely. Yeah, as Karthink has said, uh, vTerm isn't distracting. Uh, it doesn't, you know, it's, it's just exactly what you expect. So it's not interesting either. No, I'm just. You know. Yeah, and so there's some uh, good comments on the IRC. So yeah, thanks everybody. It's been fun. All right, I'm going to jump off now. Nice talking to you, Howard. You too. All right. Thank you all. I think I'll drop off as well. All right, thank you.